لله وآله وصحبه ومن والاه جزاك الله خير for choosing this talk first have been a while that I want to talk about Surah Al-Asr it's a very important surah I usually try to recite this surah when I feel um, I need to remind myself about the importance of time usually it's very good reminder that you listen to the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <coughs> us about the importance of time and subhanAllah the scholars they said about this this surah they said if people they reflect not accept this surah it will be enough for them they really reflect the ayat and they get the lesson from the ayat and they think about it, it will be enough for them. That's why, as Muhammad mentioned, the Sahaba they used to recite the surah. Each time they try to leave each other. They recite the surah, reminding each other for the importance of time. So First of all, is there any reason that this surah was revealed? We know like, the, like there's uh, some surahs, most of actually, most of the surahs, it reveals for a reason. And it's mentioned because of that this surah was revealed or this ayat was revealed because of this incident that happened during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu But for Surah Al-Asr, there is no incident that mentioned in the tafsir that this was revealed according to this incident or this situation so we don't really know if there's any reason or asbab nuzul as we call it like the reason for revelation this is first and we see in this surah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as many other surahs he make an oath by the time of Asr and most of the English translations they said it's the time of after them. but actually the time of Asr it's the time it's the as the scholars they said they said it's the last time of the day it's the end of the day it's the time before the sunset or from Salat al-Asr to the Salat al-Maghrib and usually Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he choose something to swear like to make an oath with there is a good reason like for example Salat al-Duha he said Wa-Duha wa al-Layli idha said the Mushrikeen at that time they said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala left the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so he swear with the early morning and with early night that neither in the morning or neither in the night that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never leave the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so now why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala choose this time to make an oath subhanallah people at the beginning of the day they are so busy and then the noon and afternoon it's like really hot or they are tired but everyone enjoy the last time of the day you know how they took the pictures like when the sunset and they took it as like the romantic hour during the whole day and it's 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 correct this is when people go outside and enjoy and this is our life so whoever goes and see this time he will realize it's so short he goes for a while and then the sunset will occur so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminded us 
that our life is that short. Whoever you think you are, or if you enjoy your life, and you think you are able to do everything in this life, remember, this beauty image, it's so short. The sunset will come and it will end. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Wal asr. With this time, just to, to remember, it's a reminder for you to, to remember, it's, it's so short. Indeed, and listen to the ayat, indeed or surely, surely, mankind, and then, Levi, Lam, Lam, Tawkid, again, so he said, surely, mankind, indeed, fi khusr, in loses. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, certainly mankind and loses. Even though they think they will enjoy their time. But their time is so short. So before we go to the next part, there is a very important thing about Al-Asr. Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made an oath with this time. First of all, we know there is a Salat. We call it Salat Al-Asr. Salat Al-Asr. And it's very important. Very important Salat. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the authentic hadith, whoever leave, leave Salat Al-Asr, or he like left Salat Al-Asr, it goes, فَكَأَنَّمَا وُتِرَ أَهْلَهُ وَمَالَهُ he just like to lose all his families, all the members of his family, and his money. This is great loss. Like he he got nothing. So why the Prophet Sallallahu would say this only for Salat al Asr? He doesn't say this for any other Salat. Men fatat Salat al Asr, whoever leaves Salat al Asr. فَكَأَنَّمَا وُتِرَ أَهْلَهُ وَمَالِهُ He lose his family and his money and stay alone without anything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in another ayah حَافِظُوا حَافِظُوا عَلَى الصَّلَوَاتِ And it's enough, keep your prayer, right? And حَافِظُوا It doesn't mean actually keep. It means keep and protect now. It's both. Keep and protect your prayers. Salawat. But then he said, Salat al Wusta. And the middle prayer. So why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala point the middle prayer? And by the way, there is a lot of opinions about which salah is the Salat al Wusta. So most of the scholars and the majority of the scholars, they said it's Salat al-Asr. And why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said it's the mid? Because it's between the Salawat. There is Fajr, Dhuhr before Salat al-Asr, and then there is Maghrib and Isha. And this is the majority of the Sahaba, majority of the scholars, they said it's Salat al-Asr. But there are some other opinions. Some of them, they said it's Salat al-Fajr. Some of them they said it's Salat al Some of them they said it's Salat al And some of them they said it's Salat al Witr. So a lot of opinions. And there is a reason for each each uh, one. For example, Salat al they said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said four rak'at salat and two and maghrib is the mid. It's a three. Between this and this. Some of them they said no, Salat al Fajr. Because it's when the angels come and the shift will change. The, the angels from the, uh, the morning angels will come and the night angels will leave on Salat al Fajr. So this is the mid time. And this is for the opinion who said 
there is only one time when the angels will switch. Most of the scholars, they said there is two times during the day and night. One in Salah, in <coughs> Fajr, and this is like, it's, it's, it's authentic hadith in, in, in Bukhari and Muslim, and Muslim, and Muslim and Malik. And from the Silsila, they have يَتَعَاقَبُونَ فِيكُمْ مَلَائِكَةٌ بِاللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ Yes? Anyone knows what Salat al-Fajr is one? And what is the other time? When the Malaika will switch. Asr. Exactly. So, during this time, as the Prophet ﷺ said, Salat al-Fajr, that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَقُرْآنَ الْفَجْرِ إِنَّ قُرْآنَ الْفَجْرِ كَانَ مَشْهُودًا Because it, it, it witnessed by the, the angels who comes in the early morning and the angels leave that keep with comes with you during the night stay with you during the night and they, when they will leave they will then leave unless unless they they hear the Quran and Fajr from you and the people who comes like the the angels who comes they will stay with you they hear the Quran and Fajr as well that's why it's they said it's witness. They witnessed Quran and Fajr. So both they were recorded. Because you have Hafala, the angels who write all your amal during the day. And they switch. So both of them they will record it. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said mashhud. It's witnessed by the angels. Both of them they will write this amal for you. And this is actually, subhanAllah, this is from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants the angel to write our amal? Because even in this hadith that I mentioned, he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more knowledgeable from the angels of the situation of his servants. But he asking them, how did you leave my servants? So why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ask? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's so just. So he wants you to be satisfied or to be, to accept the witness of the angels. Imagine if, if someone said, okay, I'm the judge, I'm the witness, I'm everything. It doesn't seem right. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, Kafa bi nafsika liyawma alayka hasiba. Like it's enough that yourself will be the judge about yourself. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make the angels witness and the other organs. He will seal on your mouth and will let all the other, like you, the hands will talk, the legs will talk, the feet will talk. And subhanAllah, the Prophet sallallahu said, and this is in the day of judgment, when the slave of Allah would say, I, will, I wouldn't accept anyone to be witness over me. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would seal his mouth and let his organs talk. And then when they will talk and they witness against him, he said, For you, I was fighting. And they said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, let us talk. And we would say the truth. So he would say to his hands, to his legs, like, why you, you, you witness against me? And they said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us. They can't reject the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is subhanAllah, it's, 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 it's very dangerous. 
sometimes we think like it's okay we can say this we can tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this and we prepare some reasons for doing some ma'asi but on the day of judgment you will not be able to stop your hands from saying the truth if you walk to something haram you can't stop your feet from talking saying it went to that place you can't stop your eyes from saying the truth that you watched this haram thing and it's it will be a musiba at that day called a disaster to let yourself be a witness about you. You can't, you can't reject them. That's it. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, It's enough that you are be judging yourself. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the angels in the time of Fajr that's why the time of Fajr is very important and on the time of Asr they switch and they both write your deeds and goes with your deeds to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's just like to conclude why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make an oath with Salat al-Asr why it's important and there is another thing also, we all remember that the Prophet Sallallahu said there is an hour during the Jum'ah when the Dua will be accepted. Anyone knows when is that exactly? Asr to the Maghrib. Asr to the Maghrib. There is, there is two opinions. I think Ibn Umar, Ibn Umar said it's the, the hour when, when the Imam goes to the member and it's when he gives the, you can make a dua between the two khutbas. But most of the scholars, uh, Abu Rayla and uh, a lot of Sahaba, they said it's, it's the time before the sunset. It's the time of Asr. It's the time of Asr when the dua will be accepted. And this is again because the angels comes during that time. So now we know the importance of Salat al Asr. That's why the Prophet says, Just like if you leave Salat al Asr, just like you lose your family and your money. <laughs> the angels will go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying he didn't pray he didn't pray as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask them each time they go down and comes up Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask them how did you leave my servants your angel would say he didn't pray as if you pray Asr, he would say, I left him praying. In another hadith that the Prophet Sallallahu said, and this is an authentic hadith in Muslim, he said, he will not enter the hellfire. The one who prays before the sunset and before the sunrise. And he means Salat al-Fajr and Salat al-Asr. He will not enter the hellfire, the one who prays before the sunset and the sunrise. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Inna al-insana lahi khus. Most surely that mankind indeed it loses. And now accept. So accept who? So first of all, what does it mean Amen? He doesn't say Aslam. 
right? When, when the Bedouin people, they said, Amanna, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, don't say Amanna. Say, Islamna. وَلَمَّا يَدْخُلِ الْإِيمَانَ فِي قُلُوبِ Right? وَلَمَّا الْإِيمَانَ فِي قُلُوبِ So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, let the Iman enters your heart first, then you say Amen. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا That doesn't mean, like when you say, oh, أَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ You are Mu'min now. You are Muslim. You are Muslim. But, Iman, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ ثُمَّ لَمْ يَرْتَابِ Those who believe in Allah and His Messenger, without doubt, there is no doubt in their hearts. وَجَاهَدُ بِأَمْوَالِهِ وَرَسُولِهِ And they make the effort with themselves. They spend their money for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the movements, the believers. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا doesn't say like anyone. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't agree with the Bedouin when they said we are Mu'min. Because they are not. He said wait until the Iman comes to your hearts. And then say we are Mu'min. You're just Muslims now. And you can see this, subhanAllah, you can see this sometimes with a lot of Muslims. They say, we believe in Allah. We believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a razza And this is the point where you can see the real Iman. <clears throat> we all believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the provider. But when you get short of money, you will get to the bank and get a loan. You will call your friend. You will ask like your brother. You will try like, oh, who has some money and he can give me some money. But who did you forget? If you ask, at least start with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Pray, raise your hand, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, oh Allah, I need this. Actually, these days, it's, it's a very rare to see someone Start with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even though he said, oh, it's all between the hands of Allah, but he go and ask another people. So why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبِدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ For Iman. Two things. We only worship you and seek help only from you. But we don't do this, no. We seek help from others, not from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We go actually... Any, anyone except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I always mention this, this story, it's just always in my mind, subhanAllah. They said, there's a rich man, it happens like he's from Salih, he's a very pious. He was trying to sleep, but he couldn't. And try and try and try, and he's so rich. So, he doesn't go like empty, like with empty bucket. He always keep his buckets full with money. And he said like, I can't sleep, so let's go to the masjid. So he went to the masjid. And he enters the masjid during the night, and he saw one guy making a dua. Oh Allah, I'm in need. I need this and this and this, and you know. And he started feeling, okay, Maybe that's the reason why I couldn't sleep. So let's give him some money. And he gets the money and gives him the money. And then he told him, he said, Oh, I, I really like appreciate some sleep, so maybe he will come again and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I, I can't sleep again. So he told him, he said, like, I'm this person, my house is beside the masjid. If you need anything, come 
and see me. So this guy, he replied to him. He said, so do you want me to leave the one who dragged you during the night, brought you from your house to me to give me money and go and stand in, in, in your door? The one who gives me the money without being without uh, what they call badal, without humiliating me and you want me to stand in front of your door so this is the real tawakkur this is how you actually rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is the real iman and now we can compare our iman I'm talking about myself first to this iman if we really believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our razaq so we rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the provider you rely on Allah if you think all things is between the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala don't be afraid it's all good as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith all the matter of the mu'min not the muslim all things happened to the mu'min is khair is good for him why something good happened to him he will make sure he will thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then it will be good for him as ibn al-qayyim said if allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the whole world to a one person and he said alhamdulillah or he thanks allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said the blessings of saying alhamdulillah thanking allah subhanahu wa ta'ala much better than the whole world and if the mu'min something bad happened to him he will be patient and then the rewards will come to him and actually the rewards will not be only in akhir it will be in dunya as well because when you become patient you will realize the things better than the one who get benefit and you will analyze the problem and you will be able to solve it if you get panicked you will solve nothing you will keep this problem with you until you will come down and you think about it but if you make faith if you make uh, yourself and teaching yourself to be patient and then you will come down you will think it's all from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then try to deal with the problem so it's good in dunya and good in akhirah and we will talk about patience inshallah at the end of the surah because it's talking about patience so illa alladheena aman who is the mu'min the one who believe in Allah his messenger no doubt in his heart he make an effort himself spend the money for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is the movement and then وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ and this is the two things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always keep together Iman without Amal it's worthless it's the proof of Iman and it's worthless you will get nothing because you don't do amal for the sake of Allah so you will not get the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you don't believe in Allah your amal is nothing you don't do it for the sake of Allah so Allah will not reward you for your amal and if you believe in Allah you will obey the words and the teachings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so al-amal al-salih is the result of the iman if you say I believe in Allah you will be happy to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to do and to offer more a'mal more good deeds 
Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would love you for your amal. In the authentic hadith that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in this hadith Qudsi, He said, There is nothing to bring my slave closer to me than doing the obligatory, the para'al, the obligatory deeds. And if he continue offering nawafil, continue offering more good deeds, I will love him. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you, he say, I will be with him all the time. When he use, uses his hand, when he walks, and if he asks, I will answer his call. And if he seek refuge, I will give him a refuge. That's it. That's why in the other hadith that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would say, if you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will cover your needs. He will fill your hearts with Iman, will cover your needs. But if you search for just work and leave the worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will fill your hands with work. That's the exact words of the hadith. He will fill your hands with work and will never cover your, need, cover your needs. So you will work and work and work and the work will never finish and you will still need. That's you, you see, in the hadith you see the poverty on the top of each one looking only for money. Like whatever he collects, he will still work as someone he will starve to death if he doesn't work. Why? No one knows because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never cover, cover his needs. He will still think, oh, what if I lose my money? What if I lose this? What if I do this? He has one billion, maybe he will never use it if he if he tried to spend it, he will not be able to spend it. But he would think like, oh, now I'm not the richest one on, on the earth. Maybe someone will beat me. So I have to work. And he works the whole day, getting back very exhausted. Can't do anything. And he will die, <coughs> will never enjoy even the money. That's why you will find the sign of poverty in his forehead. You, will, you, you can see it. Like you, you will see a lot of people, they have money, but they don't really enjoy it. They just work and work and work. And subhanAllah. Because there is no good deeds, there is no amal salih, there is no iman. They don't believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the two things. Amanu وعمل الصالحات and then وتواصل بالحق وتواصل بالصبر so here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't say they have or they follow the حق and they have صبر they follow the truth and they have patience he doesn't say this he said تواصل they advise each other they advise each other with haq and with sab. Why? Because as the Prophet ﷺ said, ad-dinu al nasiha This religion is the religion of advice. We can't live without the advice. This is the religion of the advice. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us in a way that we can see the mistakes of everyone Except <coughs> ourselves. That's why the Prophet ﷺ said, Al Mu'minu Mir'atu Akhi. Again, the believer, according to his belief, is the mirror to his brother. Because he can't see the error that inside him. So he needs the mirror to see his mistakes. 
But again, to do the nasiha, you should know how to give the nasiha. To know the situation of the one who in front of you. To do it in a nice way, with the wisdom and with the knowledge. If you see someone do a mistake in the salah, at least you should know if there is an opinion that said it's a good or it's an okay thing to do in the salah. Because there is a lot of opinions and sometimes this is how most of the fights in the masjid starts. A guy come to another and said, no, this is a mistake, you shouldn't do it. And he said, no, no, this is right, you're doing the mistake. He said, no, not that how my shaykh taught me. This is the only way. No. There's the Prophet Sallallahu himself, he did, like for example, with him, he did it in many ways. And he did three rakahs, five, seven, nine. So if, if, if you see someone doing the witr all together, five, and you go to him and say like, oh, this is wrong. Because you are not familiar with this action. So now you need to get the knowledge before you give the advice. Or ask. Say, I don't know this. Do you, do you like really know that is correct? Maybe he doesn't know. So it's very good to know about the situation of the person before you advise him. Maybe you will embarrass him without knowing. And this is, we get the example from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He always mentioned this hadith, this hadith as the best example for this. When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saw a man like wearing very um, old and bad clothes. He went to him and he said, do you have money? He doesn't say like, oh, why are you wearing this? He said, do you have money? He said, yes. He said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed you with money? He said, yes. He said, like, what kind of money? He said, everything. I have camels, I have sheep, I have this and that. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed you, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would like to see the favors on you. To see his favors on you. It's very simple words to remind him to wear very good clothes. So you need to get the knowledge. You need to know about the person. Because if he doesn't have if he doesn't have money, and then you go to him and say, like, why are you wearing like this? And he can't afford it. You will really put him in a bad situation. He will not be able to answer. Maybe he will run away, he will never come again. So you should know the situation of the person. Give him the advice smoothly with the knowledge. So what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ask us to advise each other. Haq and sab. Haq, it's the rule. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't accept unjust. And the hadith that Muhammad mentioned earlier, when, when the Prophet sallallahu said, give the victory or like support your brother, whether he's balim uh, or mazlou, impressed or he's the oppressor. They said, if he's a mazlou, if something like unjust happened upon him, we will support him, we know this, and we can do it. But if he's the malim, if he's doing bad things, if he's doing unjust, how we can support him? And then the Prophet ﷺ said, by stopping him from doing dhulm. If you stop your brother from doing bad deeds, actually you support him. And you save him. You save him in this dunya and in akhirah as well. The hereafter. So, tawasaw bil haq wa tawasaw bil sabr. 
Sab is very important. Sab is very important. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in another, in another uh, ayah in Surah Al-Kah, وَصْبِرْ نَفْسَكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَدَاتِ وَالْعَشِيِّ يُرِيدُونَ وَجْهِ He said, he said, be patient with those. And he said, وَصْبِرْ نَفْسَكَ like force yourself to be patient with who? With those who only seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And subhanAllah the Salihin, they said, they said the good company, it can honor even the dog. And hear this story. Which dog has been mentioned in Quran? The dog of Ahlul Kahf, right? Kalmu, Basqun Dira'i, Al Wasir. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has honored the dog. Mention him in Quran because he's company with the Salihin, with the pious people. So imagine if it's someone going with the Salihin for their salah, for their knowledge, for their good company. Sometimes it's not easy to be with the salih. Wallahi, I, I, I know a friend, he said like, I try to go with some of the hafala, some of people who like memorize the Quran. And I company them, and we was doing qiyam <coughs> in Ramadan. And we did qiyam, and then we did suhu, then Salat al-Fajr, and then I want to sleep. And then they said, why you sleep? Just try to review some juzu until Salat al duha And I said, like, I did the whole night. Now I'm like really tired. It's really, I'm really exhausted. Sometimes it's like to keep up with these people is very hard. But you gain a lot of hasanat. Sometimes you can't really force yourself unless you are with a good group, with a good people. If you are with a good people, you try to copy them. This is actually the, 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 the nature of the human being. You go with, with the people who deal with a lot of money. And this is a true story. I you know a guy who like has all his friends suddenly they they have their companies and they made a lot of money so he tried to copy them and he gets big loan and make a trade and he lost all this loan and now he just want to return to his old status like now there is a lot of money he, he needs to work to cover all this money. Sometimes like being with the people, if you can't control yourself, it's very harmful. So you have to pick and choose the right company and copy them. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Wasbir nafsa. Force yourself. Be patient with those who only seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Morning and evening. Always asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So to do this, you need a lot of patience. Wallahi is not easy without patience. And the scholars they said there is three kinds of patience. There is sabrun ala ta'a. To be patient with doing the ta'at, with doing the good deeds. Doing the good deeds. You need a lot of patience. <coughs> That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about the salah, وَإِنَّهَا لَكَبِيرَةٌ إِلَّا عَلَى خَاشِعِينَ It's, it's a, like to keep up your prayers on time and doing with the jama'ah. Wallahi, it's not easy. You need like a good amount of patience to keep your prayers. So, so, you need a lot of patience to do so. 
Hajj, Zakah. It's all need to be patient to do the ta'at. And the second is sabrun ala al To hold on your desires. To control yourself. Not to do ma'asi, not to do bad things. Especially in this in these days when the ma'asi is like it comes to you. You don't even need to go and seek the ma'asi. It comes and enters your house and you can't say anything you can accept or refuse it's actually it's very difficult it needs practice it needs a lot of patience and the other kind of patience is sabrun ala fadailahi subhanahu wa ta'ala about what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written for you in this life Sometimes it's very difficult. Sometimes you lose some people that you really love. And we, we should remember that the sub is in the sadmati ula with the first shock. This is the sub. One time the Prophet وسلم, was passing through the graveyard and he saw a lady crying. And he said, be patient. So she said, you don't know him. And the Prophet ﷺ went. And then she was being told, this is the Prophet. And she followed the Prophet ﷺ. And she said, now I'm patient. The Prophet ﷺ said, the patient, the patience is with the first shock. If someone tells you something bad, like happened to someone or something happened to you and you say Alhamdulillah ala kulli hal I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for everything and now you are from the side right? if you get panicked and swear and do this and this and then they said oh okay maybe I did it wrong it's okay to stop yourself from doing this but not you are will not consider as a sabah sabah when you do it at the beginning at the beginning of the problem. This is the sabr. So, each time I recite this surah, Wallahi, I keep in my mind all these information. Especially the first part, wal asr. The importance of time of asr. Sometimes you go outside and you see this dunya, Wallahi, it's, it's beautiful. If you, if you leave yourself, it can take you easily and it will take you to the, its circle until the time of death will come and then you will rise like, oh, now I should think the sunset comes, so this is the time of the end of the time for you and you can't regret anything you can't do and switch to any good deeds anymore so inshallah whenever we recite this surah we should keep all this information in our minds and remind each others with the with the truth with the sub sometimes you find people they really wants you to remind them with a sub. They do a lot of efforts, but no one encourage them. So tell them that, that you know it's very difficult and alhamdulillah you will find this insha'Allah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the day of judgment. So before we finish insha'Allah, any questions? No? Just a question. The only brother Muhammad mentioned about the Asr, that's the time, and then he mentioned the time of prayer. The, the Asr this is the time, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swear with the time of Asr, not yeah. with the Salah of Asr. But during this time, we have Salatul Asr. Yeah. I thought, like, well, Asr. Yeah. And, and, and then, I, when I talked about the Salah, I just tried to explain how important this time is. There is a Salat al-Asr, which is Salat al-Wusta, it's 
very important. There is a malaika. Yes, it's the time of Asr. Not Asr, time of the dunya. If you consider the dunya, it's just like the time of Asr. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meant. So the whole dunya, it's just like the time of Asr. It's beautiful to you now, but it will end shortly. Okay? And there is another opinion that's what the brother of the say that when Asr, when they say uh, this is our time, the time of the Prophet until the... Yes, yes, this exactly. Is also called yes, Asr. I didn't go to this uh, opinion because yeah. it's not real like, because they said it's to honor the Prophet sallallahu It's the time considered from his time yeah. to the end. To the end. Yeah. Yes. But still, this is not the most authentic opinion. MashaAllah, this is very good. So, when they said us, the time of us. Yes. MashaAllah. Zakumullah khair. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who listen to the reminder and follow the best of it. Zakumullah khair.